Los Angeles, 2110. What was once a sea of congested traffic and agitating urban sprawl in the early 21st century has been transformed into a model of efficiency and safety. The 9 to 5 workday tradition, which forced most of society to cram into gridlocked highways en route to a kind of covert slavery, is a distant memory of a new, highly advanced technological society. Contribution to society is no longer based on the narrow, selfish pursuit of personal gain. Money lost its use long ago as the foundational premise of its existence was outgrown. The culture finally realized that a basic, technical system of collaboration, sharing resources and ideas, would enable a highly abundant, sustainable and stable world, unlike anything the market ethic of scarcity, competition and class warfare could fathom. It was called the Great Transition, where the benefit of taking an Earth-wide system perspective, coupled with the application of basic physical and social science, set in motion a train of thought that transcended most everything we had considered normal in the early 21st century. And while it is far from perfect, the basic design to take care of everyone worked, while still structurally respecting the natural environment, unleashing a kind of human freedom and capacity for development never before seen. To understand how this new world emerged, we need to start by recognizing a trend which became apparent in the early 20th century. With humanity having spent the vast majority of existence under the veil of superstition, impending scarcity and general elitism, the idea of not having enough to go around and the perpetuation of haves and have-nots appeared to be simply an immutable law of nature. War after war, genocide after genocide, it intuitively appeared that this was simply the way the human condition was to be. However, with the development of science and the notion of something called technical efficiency, a pattern began to emerge which set the stage for likely the most radical change in human societal operation in history. It was called ephemeralization, the ability to do more and more with less and less. As paradoxical as it may seem, our advancement in understanding how to use our planetary resources, in conjunction with the emerging laws of natural science, set in motion a pattern of conservation and efficiency where, over time, less and less materials, labor and energy were needed to produce and execute more and more life-supporting processes. For example, the first computer built in the 1940s covered 1,800 square feet of floor space, weighed 30 tons, and consumed 160 kilowatts of electric power. Today, an inexpensive, pocket-sized cell phone computes substantially faster, running on virtually nothing in comparison. Communication, which used to require enormous amounts of arduous copper wire to facilitate phone calls, has been replaced by lightweight satellites. Physical home construction, which took massive amounts of resources and labor, eventually evolved into using lightweight, prefabricated structures which could be assembled by automation using a fraction of the materials and labor as before, and yet were substantially stronger and durable. Even the core foundation of nutrition, agriculture, which, since the start of the Neolithic period, was bound to certain regions for certain climates and land propensities, saw a revolution in versatility, where soilless farming systems could provide organic food locally, without pesticides, using less fertilization, and with little energy wasted on transport. The very idea of globalization was a distant memory, along with the vast waste it created. In effect, no industry or sub-industry was amiss with this trend. Even labor itself, with the application of automation finally applied as the target means for production, exploded efficiency and capacity, with less and less human toil necessary over time. By the mid-21st century, even the idea of mass good production was also no more, as advancements in modular robotics and nanotechnology allowed for good production to exist on-site, on demand, in a kind of variety never before seen in capitalism. The idea of producing goods in mass and storing inventory was no more. In fact, most homes now had production rooms, which printed the basic clothes, household tools, and general needs right there on site. And on and on the efficiency grew, bringing the world into a condition of post-scarcity abundance, where, within the educational framework of natural law, Respecting that there are indeed limits to growth and consumption, 
a new human value system emerged which gloried in its capacity to increase efficiency and maintain ecological balance and sustainability. Not only physical sustainability per se, but cultural sustainability. Taking care of everyone was not a poetic consequence. It was a core focus to create a form of earthly harmony unknown before. Of course, none of these transitions came easily. The market economy and those who profited most dogmatically tried to stop this advancement as the elitism they held dear was drawn into question. It took decades of activism and showing the world, including those of great power and wealth, that life could be much better for them as well, along with everyone else, and that the market system simply was incompatible with this new mode of optimized efficiency, an efficiency desperately needed to not only progress society, but save it. Oh, shit, I gotta get back. It's almost time for my favorite TV show.